Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's not waste any of your time today. Let's talk about how to save your photos. 11 different ways to back up your iPhone media. Let's go. Number one, the iCloud photo library. You have it. If you have an iPhone, you've got all that Apple has to offer. So just go into your settings and click on your name, your Apple ID, click on iCloud. From there, you can manage your account storage. You can add more storage if you need it, manage your plan. And then in the photos app right down there, apps using iCloud, you just turn on iCloud photos. They've got all different prices for different amounts. Two terabytes for $9.99 a month in the US is not bad. If you ask me, it's very, very convenient if you have all iOS devices, but if you have a PC, you might want to consider other alternatives. So here we go. Number two iTunes backup. Yeah, connect your iPhone to a computer via an adapter and open the iTunes, which is now the music app. Click the device icon, go to the summary tab, and click backup now. This creates a backup of your entire device, including your photos. I personally hate this option. I just, I just don't want to do it. Uh-uh. Old school. Number three. Google Photos. So this is pretty simple. Install the Google Photos app on all of your devices, your iPhone, your tablet, your computer, sign into your Google account. You can enable backup and sync option in the settings. And you can access your photos and videos from any device that has the Google Photos app on it. You can share libraries, you can print. And so this is good if you have a combination of iOS and PC devices. Also, you get two terabytes for $9.99 a month, not bad. I don't know about you, but I don't have two terabytes worth of photos. But anyway, this is definitely a good option for you. Number four, Dropbox. Very similar. Download that Dropbox app and sign in. Turn on the camera upload to automatically sync your photos and videos to your Dropbox account. You can access them from any device in the Dropbox app or on the web. You get two gigabytes for free, which is not a lot, but it's good enough to kind of test it out and see if you like it. And then if you want, you can subscribe for $9.99 a month for one terabyte of storage. Now that's half the storage that you get for the Google app, but you can also transfer all sorts of different files. So not just JPEGs and photos, but also your regular files, your PDFs and other documents. Number five, OneDrive. So if you do have a Microsoft ecosystem that you are also working with with your iPhone, this is a good option for you. All you have to do is download the app and it will communicate with all of your Microsoft devices as long as you have that Microsoft 365 account and anything more than five gigabytes of storage, you're going to have to pay for it. I don't know what's included in the personal, basic and family plans. That's up to you guys to figure out on your own if you decide to go this way. But me personally, I'm not sure if I want to actually mix PC and Apple software, but sometimes you just kind of have to. All right, number six, AirDrop. This is pretty simple. It requires both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to transfer your files between iOS devices. You can enable AirDrop in your control center by tapping the AirDrop icon and then selecting who can discover your device so that you have to get your devices communicating with each other. Then you simply open your Photos app and you select whichever photos that you want to drop, airdrop or transfer to your other device. You click on airdrop and you choose the device that you know you're already communicating with because you've set that up previously and they just show up on your other device at which point you can download them and then put them on an external hard drive. It's a little clunky, but it's free for iOS users. So if you don't want to subscribe to any cloud services and you're just going to be moving things around when you're at home near your computer, it works. Number seven emailing to yourself. Seriously? Yeah, but I wouldn't do it for large groups of photos, maybe just a few at a time, because most emails can max out at a certain amount of data. So you're going to open your photos app, select the photos that you want to back up simply by tapping on them or tapping and dragging your finger. And you're going to click that little share icon and choose mail as your option of where you want to send it and simply put in your email address and mail it to yourself, at which point you can download them. I don't recommend it because it, frankly, it's kind of a pain in the, okay, number eight, flash drives. This is physically moving your images. There's, so there's no cloud service, no Wi-Fi needed for this. You're gonna connect your device to a compatible external hard drive, and you're gonna need either like a lightning to USB, USB-C to USB, 
adapter for this to work. Whatever iPhone version you have, you're going to want to get the proper adapter for this. So you're going to open the Photos app, select the images you want to back up, click on that share icon again, and tap export unmodified originals if you want the entire image, all the data that's associated with it, especially if you are shooting in RAW. And then you're going to choose your storage device, which is listed below locations and tap save. Now, if you want, you can go online and find these things like the photo stick Omni, which is apparently very, very popular. You just plug it into your phone, drag and drop the images onto the essentially like a thumb drive and then plug it into your computer and move them over that way. Number nine. The photo transfer app. This is actually a really intuitive app. I've used it in the past. Uh, when I didn't uh, subscribe to any cloud services, but as long as you are on the same Wi-Fi between your devices, it's very simple to move things around. So you can send and receive photos between different devices. All you have to do is select from your gallery, allow it access to your images. I clicked on allow full access and it shows you, it just walks you right through this, which is pretty nice. So you can stay updated. I've declined to do that. You can allow it notifications. I declined to do that. And it's pretty intuitive, send or receive. So if I click on send and then I click on to a computer and then pick from my phone. So I wanna choose the images from my phone and then I can click and drag either by specific days or I can sort by months or years and select whole bunches of images. Now that's gonna take a lot longer to do, mind you, but you have to connect to your other app on your computer and allow access to do that. So when you make sure you have the app downloaded on both your computer and your phone, and then you can transfer seamlessly. So when you open the app on your computer, like you see on the right here, there they are. They just show up after you've clicked on send. So you gotta click on that little find devices right there. It finds my phone and then I can download them directly here so I can back up my device, can create a sh slideshow, click on download, change the thumbnail size, get some information on the images. It's very simplistic, but that's sometimes that's all you really need to get things moved from one device to another. Once they're on your computer, again, from there, it's your choice as to where you want to back them up. I typically do it to an external hard drive or two and the cloud. Number 10. Mylio. Mylio app is uh, has been around for a number of years. It's very popular. They do have a free version, so I would definitely give it a try if you are interested. Now, again, this is another cloud-based option for you, but there's an easy app for mobile and desktop that you can download and also $9.99 a month if you want to do uh, have some more options there. But they've got some very handy videos on their website, and I definitely think that they're worth checking out. So that leaves us with number 11, which is my personal favorite. It is my go-to app for organization editing and for backup, and that is Adobe Lightroom. So if you are looking in the app store, just mind, be mindful of the fact that it does say Lightroom Photo and Video Editor. It doesn't say Adobe Lightroom. It doesn't say Lightroom Mobile, even though that's frankly what we all call it. We all call it Lightroom Mobile. So if you subscribe to Adobe's Photographer's Program for $9.99 a month, you already have access to this program on all of your devices. So there's really nothing extra for you to do. And that's what makes it kind of easy and seamless. As soon as you get home, your images that you took on your phone will show up on your desktop. They show up on your iPad as long as everything's on the same Wi-Fi, at which point you can just move them over to external hard drive. So this is the app that I now use for all of my image editing, my culling while I'm in the field, deciding which images I want to keep or remove. And uh, it's, it's pretty seamless and I like it a lot. But you only get, here's a caveat, you only get 20 gigabytes of storage for that $9.99 a month. So if you want to upgrade the actual amount of storage, you have to go to the $19.99 a month for one terabyte of storage. So if you're really concerned about the $20 a month and only getting the one terabyte, even though I don't think I'd actually fill up an entire terabyte, but if you do, if you shoot a lot of video on your phone and you're keeping it all on the phone, then perhaps, you know, it's worth it for you to upgrade to that. And again, Google Photos is another option where you get two terabytes for $9.99 a month, but 
these prices are all going to change with time anyway. And if you're already in the Adobe ecosystem with Photoshop and Lightroom, then again, you already have access to this and that just makes it super easy. All right. I hope this helps and good luck backing up those images. Don't leave them all on the phone for an eternity. You're going to create just a hot mess for yourself. So if you want any more advice for your mobile photography, go ahead and check out this playlist up here and I will see you there. Y'all have a great day.